The hour cometh and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Good evening, I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. It's Saturday the 30th of October, and I want to thank you for joining us as we gather online to pray the office of evening prayer. I'm going to take a few moments to light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church, continuing to ascend into heaven, even when we can't physically gather for worship. You can do the same along with me if you'd like, and when we're ready, the service of evening prayer will begin on page 20. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 138 and 139, beginning on page 508. I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. Even before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name, because of thy loving kindness and truth. For thou hast magnified thy name and thy word above all things. When I called upon thee, thou heardest me, and endured my soul with much strength. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, for they have heard the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. As for the proud, he beholdeth them afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, yet shalt thou refresh me. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand upon the fury of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord shall fulfill his purpose toward me. Yea, thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not, then, the works of thine own hands. Lord, thou hast searched me out and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts from afar. Thou art about my path and about my bed, and art acquainted with all my ways. For lo, there is not a word in my tongue, but thou, O Lord, knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful and excellent for me. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go then from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I climb up into heaven, thou art there. If I go down to hell, thou art there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there also shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me become night, Yet even the darkness is no darkness with thee, but the night is as clear as the day. The darkness and light to thee are both alike. For thou didst form my inward parts, thou didst knit me together in my mother's womb. I will give thanks unto thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My frame was not hid from thee when I was made secretly and fashioned beneath in the earth. 
Thine eyes did see my substance yet being imperfect, and in thy book were all of them written. Even the days that were planned for me, when as yet there was none of them. How dear are thy counsels unto me, O God! O how great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I wake up, I am present with thee. Wilt thou not slay the wicked, O God? Depart from me, ye bloodthirsty men. For they speak unrighteously against thee, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against me? Against thee, excuse me. Yea, I hate them right sore, even as though they were mine enemies. Try me, O God, and seek the ground of my heart. Prove me and examine my thoughts. Look well if there be any way of wickedness in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book book of Nehemiah, the fourth chapter beginning at the first verse. Now, when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he ridiculed the Jews. And he said in the presence of his brethren and of the army of Samaria, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore things? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burned ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Yes, what they are doing, what they are building. If a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Hear, O God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt upon their own heads, and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. Do not cover their guilt, and let not their sin be blotted out from thy sight, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So we built the wall, and the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and that the breaches were beginning to be closed. They were very angry, and they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. But Judah said, The strength of the burden bearers is failing and there is much rubbish. We are not able to work on the wall. And our enemies said, They will not know or see till we come into the midst of them and kill them and stop the work. When the Jews who lived by them came, they said to us ten times, From all the places where they live, they will come up against us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall, in open places, I stationed the people according to their families, with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. From that day on, half of my servants worked on construction, and half held the spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. And the leaders stood behind all the house of Judah, who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were laden in such a way that each with one hand labored on the, on the work, and the other, ha- the other, and with the other held his weapon. And each of the builders had his sword girded at his side while he built. The man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. And I said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, The work is great and widely spread, and we are separated on the wall far from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us there, our God will fight for us. 
So we labored at the work, and half of them held the spears from the break of dawn till the stars came out. I also said to the people at that time, Let every man and his servant pass the night within Jerusalem, that they may be a guard for us by night and may labor by day. So neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard who followed me, none of us, took off our clothes. Each kept his weapon in his hand. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty under their <clears throat> he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Revelation to St. John the Divine, the seventh chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. And I heard the number of the sealed, a hundred and forty-four thousand sealed, out of every tribe of the sons of Israel, twelve thousand sealed out of the tribe of Judah, twelve thousand of the tribe of Reuben, twelve thousand of the tribe of Gad, twelve thousand of the tribe of Asher, twelve thousand of the tribe of Naphtali, twelve thousand of the tribe of Manasseh. 12,000 of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 sealed out of the tribe of Benjamin. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no man could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and whence have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night within his temple. And he who sits upon the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here endeth the second lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and ever more mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy household, the Church, in continual godliness, that through thy protection it may be free from all adversities, and devoutly given to serve thee in good works, to the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, Amen. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. I invite you to call to mind this evening some way in the last 24 hours that you have been particularly aware of the presence of God. Where have you seen God at work in the world? And just as importantly, what have you seen God doing? Give thanks and praise for the gift of that experience and pray for the grace and the strength and the courage to join in with what God is doing. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thanks again for praying with us this evening. I hope that these daily services of morning and evening prayer are a blessing to you. 
Thanks again if you've been supporting us, particularly through the pandemic. We couldn't do the kind of online ministry that we've been doing without the support of people like you. If you'd like to make a donation, you can do so easily, conveniently, securely through our website at michaelmiss.ca slash donate. There's a link down below in the description. I hope that you'll also be able to join us tomorrow morning as we gather here in the church to celebrate the Feast of All Saints, a day in ahead of time. We're keeping the feast in anticipation of tomorrow. That's 10.30 tomorrow morning. You can join us here live in person or on our YouTube channel. There will be a link right here as well. You can join us either online or in person tomorrow morning. And until we meet again, be good, God bless, and take care of each other. Bye-bye.